BGMC. The biblical truth lives here. We are living in a time like no other in history. But fortunately for us, God wrote it down all in His prophecies what would happen next. Find out what prophecies came true this week, ripped straight from the headlines. Verily I say unto you, the only way to rightly understand prophecy is from a messianic Hebrew roots perspective, for without the roots the tree is dead. Stay tuned for the Prophecy News Headline Show, The Remnants Call. Welcome to The Remnants Call, The Sledgehammer Show, where prophecy, politics, religion, the straight truth come through right from your computer or your television your radio, The Sledgehammer Show, is being brought to you in part by Beth Glean, International Messianic Ministry, where Jews and Gentiles worship Yeshua, the Messiah, together. Following the Word of God from Genesis through the book of Revelation, we are completed Jews along with Gentiles that are grafted into our family. Well, what's a completed Jew? A Jew that knows their Messiah because there's only one way to heaven, the way, the truth, and the life. That is through Yeshua, the Messiah. He has come, Messiah has come. So any Jew that doesn't know Messiah is incomplete Jew. And you're not getting into heaven because there's only one way. We'll be talking about that later on. Going on. You know what? Some people call us legalistic and we say, thank you. You notice because God doesn't change. So if you're eating pig, putting up a Christmas tree, coloring bunny eggs, worshiping on Sunday, you're not going to heaven either. That's a narrow focus. What do you think? You're the only ones who are right? No. God says who's right, and God says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. His son, Messiah, Yeshua, said that, and he said in Matthew 5, 18, keep the law. It's not one jot or tittle will be missing from the law until heaven and earth pass away. This is the only show that can really bring you to truth because we proclaim the laws of God as still valid today, that this is a Judeo-Christian nation. Set on God's laws the way it was founded, and we need to go back to them because without God's laws, we are a society that's living in the abyss. And that's what we're going to be talking about today the abyss. We're going to start out with our, our introducing our panel. We're going to introduce Rav Will McCubbin to the great state of North Carolina. He's packing the, I don't know, that doesn't look like a Mossberg, but it looks like a shotgun. I'm sure it's got, ooh, it's a shot handgun. And it was nice to fire when I was down there. That was a nice puppy. That had a nice feel to it. It felt like I was here in New Jersey with the family. All right, going on to the next guest on the show. It's a man with a face for radio, the man who dedicated his firstborn son to the Lord this past Shabbat. It's none other than Rab Eduardo. Fabuloso Manjaris in his face for radio and his pants is growing. Me too. I got my pants is growing. Look, and I'm going to twist them right now. You can listen to the Sendados Antiguos show right from our application for your phone. And none other than Messianic Rabbi in Training, Mr. Martin Sanchez of the Off Key Worship Team of Echad. The man who fought at 155, the Mexican punching bag, the Mexican Speedy Gonzalez, nothing other than Martin Sanchez. All right. As we always start our our, our show off, um, like not like any other show around there, because you know there are lots of talking heads out there, lots of people talking about lots of things, but we we wrap it all around a biblical worldview. A Judeo Christian worldview. Actually, a Torah observant messianic worldview. Matthew 24, verse 10 through 12. At that time, many will be trapped to betraying and hating each other. Many false prophets will appear and fool many people. And many people's love will grow cold because of increased distance from the Torah. Okay, the Torah is the standard for living, it, the laws of God give us life. But there's a three-step process that we're going to look at in the news today. The first part is betraying and hating each other. Right now in America, people are hating each other. There's really no talking at each other. 
Uh, one of the news stories that we're not going to bring forward, but just mentioned it quickly. You know, the president was trying to work with Congress and the senators and congressmen yesterday about the uh, the immigration thing that we're going to be talking about in a little bit. Um, and one of the interns, you know, says F Trump. You know, you're just such a low life scum. You know, there really is no talking to each other, one another, really, because there is no common ground. You know, I, I despise Barack Hussein Obama, the Muslim. But, you know, I don't think you, the office of the president, you know, like, you know, that piece of crap De Niro. You're such a loser, Bobby. Why don't you go back in your hole? You know, you, and then, anyway. But betraying and hating each other. We're a nation that there really is no talking. And the reason is because we don't follow God's rules. Now, we do have a lot of false prophets. You say, we do? Yeah. It's called the regular news called CNN, false prophets, and they're trying to fool many people. Now, let's go to our news stories, and then we're going to bring in the panel. In Hebrews 13 and, and a bunch of other places, but this one was clear, marriage is honorable in every respect, marriage between one man and one woman. And in particular, sex within marriage is pure. That's between one man and one woman, husband and wife. And you're only a woman if you got ovaries. You can think you're a woman, you can put on a dress, you can wear makeup and be one ugly woman like Michelle Obama or Michael Obama, whatever she is, it is, okay? But God will indeed punish fornicators and adulterers. Now, normally in this show, we don't try to throw Israel under the bus, but <laughs> we got to throw them under the bus and roll over them and back up over them and roll over them again because they're doing ridiculous stuff. Now, the Lord is calling back his people to the land. But they're not coming back for the right reasons. They're not coming back to worship God. And they're coming back as secular humanists, most of these Jews. So much so that prostitution is a huge problem in Israel. So big that the government is... They're trying to pass a law that would fight prostitution by fighting Johns for the first time. They're, now, they get Jews together that to agree on anything. That's, you know, because you got four Jews here, you'll probably have eight opinions. Now, on one hand, you know, his wife was, you know, having her nada, so he needed to have some. On the other hand, prostitution is illegal. On the other hand, we see it in the Bible. On the other hand, uh, we see God doesn't like it very much. All right. So here they got such a big problem in Israel that they're going to start finding the, the the men that they're not going to put the, the they're not going to arrest the prostitutes, but they're going to arrest the the people and fine them. Now, your taxes are very high in Israel, and uh, living is is very tough. So imagine losing three thousand shekels. That's a big chunk of change. Now I'm going to bring on our panel talking about. Now, when you see these type of things going on in the land, gentlemen, um, the world is going to spiral out of control because, you know, we see Revelation. Those of us that are completed Jews see Revelation and the words of Messiah. Increased distance from the Torah. Rav Will, what do you think about this this um, prostitution, you know, so much so that they got to bring a bill to find the guys, not find, find them, but find them, like take money away. What do you think about this bill? Well, maybe I'm cynical, but I just had a hard time believing that prostitution is not already legal in the land because they're marrying, they're marrying homos and they've done every other leftist thing in the world. I'm totally surprised it's not legal. But anyway, it does belie a bigger problem, the, the men going to prostitutes. You know, the Orthodox, the Hasidic Jews, I disagree with them on a lot, but they do have a couple of good arguments about their people serving in the military. They claim that the military is an indoctrination camp, and their good little boys go in the military and they either come out as fornicators or seculars or homos 
and they and they and I totally agree with them that their girls should not be made to serve in the military. I'm totally in agreement with that. But it, it belies a bigger problem. The whole system in the land is no different than the whole system of any other country. It has just become a secular, godless system. And to perpetuate itself, it teaches the public secular godlessness at every level, from school to the military to government service jobs, whatever. So that's a band-aid. Arresting prostitutes and fining Johns, that's a band-aid on an infected wound. It's not going to help one thing. Uh, so they're not dealing... You know, you saw Batman the Dark Knight, where the Italian guy says, got to fix the real problem. <laughs> so they're not fixing the real problem. They're just putting on another Band-Aid. Yeah, they they are putting on another Band-Aid because it's really a, a hard issue, you know. And it's a society's issue because if you're inundated, you know, you go to the Tel Aviv beaches, you know, you got the girls wearing bikinis that barely show, that barely cover anything, you know. They're shaved and they're, they're uh, pubic area and their the breasts are hanging out. So if you're inundated with sexuality all around you, um, then you're, we're designed to procreate. God said, that, you know, be fruitful and multiply. Okay. So what do you think there, Rav Ed? What do you think? You know, and when, when the people of Israel, you know, there is a God in heaven. And the people of Israel, the men of Israel, are going to prostitutes. What do you see from Scripture? How long do you see this lasting? Because um, the stench up in heaven must be incredible. You know, and here we are, you know, we're talking about <laughs> keeping the law. And people, you're so legalistic. It's because, what, you like your sin? You like your prostitution? Well, maybe when you put your penis inside her and you get the, you know, hepatitis C and, you know, whatever, whatever else you come back with, whatever disease, the clap, whatever venereal disease, AIDS, whatever, you know, you're going to cry when, I want medicine, I want medicine, I'm going to die. Well, told you so. I, I, I don't think I'm going to have a problem with that because I'm married and, you know, we do married things and I'm happy with my wife. What do you think there, Brad? And you must be happy with your wife. You know, she just popped out another kid for you. <laughs> Amen. No, what 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 I see here is um, is really basically this is nothing new. The problem in here, what I saw, what I see in this society, is that the people are confused. Uh, people let the, their flesh and their doctrines take over for what is uh, what is against the morals and against. Uh, what is I would say in general what what is good, either Israel people they they in special they, they they must know the Torah, you know, because they grew, they grew up in that they just don't wanna don't wanna follow, and what I said like that is because they don't even know what is a marriage in these days, they don't even know who they married to, I mean, basically is for marriage, uh. To be able to have a marriage, you need to to be in agreement. But they just it's a, their lives is a mess, and we become to this society. You know, uh, they confuse what is a a marriage. So if if you said I I, I marry with you and then I go to the prostitutes, so then basically you don't fear God. Don't go. Don't don't get married. Just keep living, you know, living la vida la loca, you know, <laughs> dancing and having fun, talking about in the secular way, because like like we said, go big or go home, you know. But what they doing is they they, they bringing uh, shame to, to to because they they're God's people, you know. The world know the Jews people as God's people, you know. Talking like like I said, talking in general. What, when they do that, basically they confuse people. 
that's why because of them we have to be legalistic there is no other uh, option why we have to be we know that we have to follow God's law because we love him we have to be we have to be obedient but because of people like, like that we have to be a hundred percent legalistic that's why we are in everyone's page I was searching um, pictures uh, you know for for the show uh, the other day and coming everyone's you know I mean a, a little part in here and re remind me people are searching this because you know people are looking for truth and they find the truth in here because we profess a hundred percent legalistic we profess Torah and Yeshua that he coming to fulfill the law that's why Yeshua live in those days also you know just the only difference I, I would say this they didn't have a cell phone so, <laughs> but they they have everything in, in real time so yeah it's nothing new it's, it's things that you you will need to basically be strong and more strong and get and teach people and teach more leaders to be to extend their basics for them to be able to teach the kids that is the only way that you can change to train the kids in the way they should go it, it's such a heart issue you know that's really the biggest issue and, and you know the kids and people are so involved with their phones and even computers I mean we're using them but nobody goes outside anymore and plays sports you know nobody goes camping and builds a campfire you know with like you know with sticks and you know they make everything so easy all right, let's go on to the next story, and then I'll bring uh, Mr. Martin on, okay? I don't like Norman, Norman like to throw Israel under the bus, but I'm like, you know what? You're peeving me off. You're really peeving me off. I'm like, you know, do it in Paris. Do it in L.A. Do it in San Diego. Don't do it at the house. Not that the whole world is not the Lord's house, but when you're doing it, you know, like it's like having sex in your parents' bed. Okay, that's just ew, just ew. You know, go. Let's go on to the next story. <laughs> this is this is amazing. But this TED TED Ogay TEDx workshops calls on public to accept pedophiles. I saw this. I could not even believe it. This is this is a society without the laws of God. But you because you really can't say. You know, Alex Jones can't really say this. You know, anybody on Fox really can't say anything against this because they're not proclaiming the laws of God. So, you know, some people like broccoli, like, ew, like, ew, and like cauliflower and carrots and vegetables, and God doesn't accept vegetable offering. <laughs> um, without the standard of God's laws, all of them, well, should we stone children? Yes. Yes. God said yes. It'll stop the problem. Okay? Because they grow up. Now, listen to this thing. This German medical student at the University of Würzburg in a lecture entitled Why Our Perception of Pedophilia Has to Change. What? What are you talking about, Martin? I'm going to bring on you in a second because... Yeah. Uh, Using the story of Jonas, the pedophile she, could, she encountered only a, uh, only attracted to female children between the ages of 6 and 12. I was attracted to a 12-year-old girl when I was 12. Her name was Lynn Peck, okay? <laughs> she was 12. I was 12. She was in my class. She had blonde hair. But I wasn't a, an, an, an old person with gray hair. Henny attempts to draw a distinction between people who sexually abuse children and pedophiles who do not uh, pedophiles who do not abuse children. Wait, what is a pedophile? You're having sex. You know, that's a person, adult, having sex with a minor, with a child. But a pedophile doesn't abuse children and has done nothing wrong, Henny says. Martin, 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 is is there any this is insane. But you know, and people get mad at me because you know, like I'm drinking your know, seltzer water here, you know, and I'm proclaiming the laws. I'm like, what are you talking about? 
But when you remove God from a society, this is the outcome. What do you say there, Mr. Martin? Yeah, it, it's definitely true. I mean, there no God, no shalom, no uh, nothing to to hold the animal that people has in it. And not for nothing, but today something happened at work. I was working, I was driving in the van with these guys, and the the guy that I had the the other discussion about uh, some subjects, you know, Bible and other stuff. There's a girl crossing, like 16 year old girl, or 15, and the guy took, you know, he like a dog. He was like, you know, like the same things and. and and I say, I had to say something. And I, I was sitting around the, all the way in the back of the bed and I say, you pervert. And I, 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 I call him by his name. I say, you are pervert and you gonna go to hell. And, and then everybody's too quiet. And, and the Christian guy started laughing. He didn't say nothing to me, but, but this is the, the, the spirit that's the, 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 the demons go around the world right now. They, they, they go in, in people's mind and hearts, and he, and he goes into Israel now. We just got this uh, uh, um, uh, lecture on, on Shabbat, the teaching, and, and Revelation 11. The spirit of Sodom, it's, it's, it's in Israel, and God is going to start, it's, and, and the Kepha says, that the judgment is starting in the house of God. That's where everything's gonna start. And unfortunately, things like this happens in the United States and it's prayer all over. Everybody starts assimilating these stupid things all over the world. All over the world. Nobody wants justice today. Nobody wants uh, nothing to do with God. God is nothing to people right now. Um, I was I was seeing the, uh, in, in Mexico, we, they have the, uh, the elections. And one of the uh, uh, this person that is running for president, you know, he knows the Bible. And he quote, he's, and they ask him, "Do you approve a uh, death penalty?" And he says, "Yes, we have to do it." And he started quoting things, and I said, "This guy knows about the Bible." Well, I said, "Nobody likes the guy. Everybody's talking bad about him." He says, "They they accusing him," and I said, "That's but this is the spirit." Nobody wants justice. Nobody wants God in their lives. That's why, and it's going to get worse, and it's going to get, you know, we have to take care of our own families and teach our kids, and, and we have to protect our kids by these animals that are coming. Now we have to worry about these animals besides the Muslims, besides the other people. God is going to protect us, but we have to keep our eye open with these people, and it's getting worse. And it's getting worse, you know. It's, it's unfortunately what's happening. It, it's, it's like a drug, you know. Once you know, once you or a cigarette, you know, Rav Ed and and Rav Will were, you know, cigarette smokers. Um, you know, you start off at one, and you know, you take, you're trying to be cool, you know, <coughs> or you know, you take your first drink of hard alcohol, and you're like, <gasps> okay. You know, it's like burning. You know, it's like those Mexicans that can't, you know, you know, take the hot sauce. You know, um, so, but sex is the same way because in the brain, <clears throat> drugs <clears throat> and sex are in the same area in the brain. My wife used to work at uh, um, in rehab with brain injuries, and um, so what happened is. You want more and more and more. And you want younger, younger, and younger. You look at the Mormons. Their first wife, they start out, they're both 20. Then they're married for five years, <clears throat> and he takes another wife. So he's 25, she's 25, the first wife, and then the second wife is 22. Then again, they go for another couple of years, so he's 30, and then he's got a 20, a 30 year wife, a 20, uh, 27 or 28 year old wife and he marries a 20 year old keeps going down 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 okay 
So pedophilia. I'll come to Rav Will with this next story here. Do you think we got to change? I mean, really, can a, a Christian, you know, Warren Jeffress, you know, that we're going to talk about later, you know, Hagee, um, Michael Root, anybody who doesn't proclaim the laws as 100%, you can't say anything, okay? Because, you know, when I was a kid, ties were, ties were skinny, ties were fat, okay? Collars were... Big, little, big, little, okay? Things change, okay? But the word of God doesn't change. And if you say we're under grace, that we don't got to follow any of the law, you cannot biblically say anything about pedophilia. Because, guys, you know, it's, you know so what's the child? Well, we're supposed to protect the children. Who says? The Bible says we're supposed to protect the children. The law says, not that it's the, the secular law, the biblical law, which the secular law was patterned after. What do you think there, Rav Will? Yeah, this is an interesting subject. Uh, I don't know how they could label someone a pedophile unless they were actually doing something to a child. Just being attracted to a child, I guess, and not doing anything doesn't really make you a pedophile that makes you being tempted or something so to actually be a pedophile I mean I think you have to actually be doing something right but this is a weird subject because you know it wasn't too long ago the consent age for marriage in North Carolina was 10 years old that's right 10 and when I was a child, the consent age was, I think they raised it to 13. Uh, and now I think it's 16. But, you know, my grandmother got married to a guy in his late 30s, and she was just a teenager. So I guess it all depends on somebody's intentions. If you're going to marry some young person and be with them for the rest of your life, I guess that's cool. But I think what these workshops are aiming at, I think they're trying to get people to accept the disgusting practices of Islam since they've already flooded this country with Muslims. And you know, those guys don't have age limits. They, they uh, like to have a harem of little, little tiny girls or whatever. So, and they can. So, I think this is a step toward getting people to accept the disgusting uh, Middle Eastern philosophies on marriage and like multiple marriages and uh, attraction to children. I mean, come on, between the ages of 6 and 12, that is not marriage material. Those people should be strung up somewhere. Uh, they should be hung by the neck for that. So, uh, but yeah, I think that this is, I think that this is a, a crack in the door if they can get people to accept the notion of adult men with these little girls. Uh, that'll make it all the much, all the more easier for these, these Islamic guys they've, they've let infiltrate this country. I just don't understand. I mean, I could see, you know, I could push it like, you know, she's 15 and she looks like a 20 year old. She dresses like, you know, she's 20. She's got her body showing, you know, but some, a child that's six years old, what could possess you to desire? I mean, even to get, you know, your man part enraged at a six year old, you're just sick and you need to be killed. Okay, you need this is what God says in the law. You need to be stoned to death, not by the Rolling Stones, by Mick Jagger. Okay, but when you don't have God's laws, you know, and Yeshua said in Matthew 5, the Messiah said in Matthew 5, verse 18, not one jot or tittle. See, this is what happens when the church, when the Christian body loses its moral value. Okay. When you constantly say we're under grace, we're under grace, we're under grace, then you really can't say anything about this because 
of you know you have no laws. You can't say fornication because you don't. What's that red well? Ah, uh, that's a demon. That Satan's going. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next story. Let's move because I, I'd like, and this one, this one came out today. So, um, but there's some stories like that are good to dis discuss. Okay, and uh, and if you're liking, if you're liking the the Sledgehammer Show, send us an email. Hit the dog on donate button. Hit the thumbs up. All right, let's go to the next story. Proverbs, Michelle 29, verse 18. Without a prophetic vision, the people throw up all restraint. But he who keeps Torah is happy. Ah, oh, very good. Very good. But without a prophetic vision, if you don't have the laws of God, you don't have Messiah. Now, Messiah didn't come here to change anything. He came to put the ball back in your court. It's personal salvation. Okay? Salvation is a free gift. And then you have to change your life to follow in Yeshua the Messiah's footsteps. All right. Now, look, without a prophetic vision. Now, listen. Look at this one. So we talked about prostitution in, in Israel. We talked about pedophilia in Germany. You know, and now California, the, pit, the den of iniquity. Most uh, fair amount of California lawmakers move forward with a proposed legislation to restrict the use of force by police. I think, you know, let, let me just read it yeah, a little bit and then I'll tell you what I think. Okay. Uh, the controversy bill aimed at limiting the use of lethal force by California police officers is moving forward after passing Senate Public Safety Committee with a vote five to one. Bill 931, the legislation would elevate the standard for using deadly force and re from reasonable to necessary. Uh, somebody's trying to ram you with their car. One of the videos I saw today was that they were, you know, they had the search warrant for the guy's house. The guy tries to run over two cops. Would that be necessary to shoot the guy when he's trying to run you over with his pick him up truck? Okay, or his, his his car. You know, I think what the cops should do is just stop going into inner city neighborhoods. Because that's where the shootings are occurring. Okay? I love the body cams of the cops. I think the cops need to promote it really big. Okay. Sometimes it shows the cop being stupid and that's good because we need to, you know, some guys don't shouldn't shouldn't be cops. Okay, I used to work with the police department. Some guys, you know, got in because their father was a cop or they knew somebody, and they really shouldn't be cops. But to make legislation like this, the cops should just say, okay, we're not going into L.A. anymore. Okay, you know, some of the the, the actors would say, you know, the cops are bad. The cops should just say, you know what, MS-13, if you want to go, you know, to so and so's actor's house go ahead he calls the police we're not coming because he says we're bad and um so if anything happens don't call us all right uh rabbit what do you think of this i mean i mean what we have is a lawless society okay the cops are just reacting to a society that is garbage because you've removed god this is what you this is the fruit that you get what an amazing bill Apparently, you know, they, they don't, they don't, they don't, once again, they're, they're, they're to make all those, we, we, we got to see with, with all these new laws that is, is coming and, and to approval and all that, most of, most of the people, will, they don't know that, you know, they, they, they don't know nothing of, of that. That's why you said the, the, for the lack of knowledge, the increases of, um, to be able for the people to be able to study what they going to to be living uh, could be good or or bad decisions that they are going to do. But we can see clearly that these ones, all these um, um, we call the the bills, we, all all these in in some point of, of of the life, you know what what the what the constitution does also is you know to to bring um what is right for, for the uh, social moral um, community, basically. And, and got to be an agreement, got to be a, a, a standard to, to be able to, to have peace. And also you, we were mentioning all, all, these, all these caps and police officers. 
you explain at the beginning why the police were make you at the beginning what was the, their purpose at the beginning you know and when they change um the people they have to act different uh to because they were just they was to, to bring peace right but the society pushed them to to react in, in a different way so now we have that and, and you know it, this is not just one little thing this carry more consequences to to everyone and, and basically to to people who which we are doing the things correctly uh you know not too long ago you mentioned that they also wants to pass the law to, to take the guns away and all that you know it's not just one little thing that you, we can see from the different points of, of, of view the four corners of, of the of the of the frame it is uh really amazing with all this is going on well it, it is it's, it's amazing but you see at the bottom we, we don't have a problem with the law enforcement we have a problem with racism in the country until we address that we're going to continue to have these problems all right i'm a jew look i'm a jew you go to my neighborhood you go to the the williams borough park of uh of of new york how many jews with the pay assist are trying to run over the cops, okay? How many Jews are, oh, you give me such problems, officer, you, you, you're not a nice man, you know? Who, how many, you know, <laughs> with the big hats, the black coats and the white shirts, I'm gonna sue you so bad, you know, you're gonna take your house. Okay, you're gonna put me in handcuffs, that hurts a little bit. I, oh, is hurting my shoulder, I'm gonna have to go to the chiropractor again. You know, you don't have them, French frying and effing this and s and that and spitting at them and kicking. You know, the one video I watched is the guy, the cop on the beach, the girl. You know, she's got her whole breast hanging out on the beach, and and and, and the, the body cam of the cop. He's like, "Give me your name." Now you don't have to give your name, okay? Unless you're being charged, okay? And the officer has to state the statute. I'm I'm charging you with drunken disorder. It's a statute, okay? okay? But you still don't have to give you. Your name, then they'll handcuff you, they'll arrest you, but you don't have to give your name. But, you know, you get stupid on the cop, then they got to do, you know, they got to react because you're being stupid. But you don't see this in the, you know, in the Jewish neighborhoods. Oh, I'm going to throw a kanish at you. You know, you bad, stupid, you, I, your IQ of a dog, you know. <laughs> uh, I guess not only that, uh, the, uh, the other day I saw the Jewish. You're muted. You're muted. They, they, there is not only that, that you know the Jewish people they want to help. That I saw that was in 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 West Orange. I, I believe they tried to buy more land to rebuild those buildings and and you know and giving more uh, for the poor people to be able to they have a a, a place to live. You know the, that is one of the mitzvah from the Torah. You know to help to to provide them but they have to work too and people don't like it they said we don't want that you just you just want to take everything you choose on everything as i remind yes <laughs> you know the lord give them uh to to yeshua you know all everything so people don't want to do it people don't want to work people it's lazy people want everything just welfare yeah, but it's it's well, it's a society that wants drugs, alcohol, welfare. You're, you're correct with welfare, and they're lazy and they're not into education. So then you get the problem. So I think the cops should say, "All right, you think we got a problem with this? We're not going in your your neighborhood. We're going to let the gang members, you know, and we'll see how much you like it. And we'll let your constituents go in, into your office and beat you. And we're not going to when they string you up from a tree." We're going to say, well, that's a damn shame. Okay. Now here in New Jersey this past weekend, there you see a nice outstanding young man, Amir Armstrong. Now Amir just got out of jail. He would, or just maybe Tahij, Tahij Wells, 32, just got released from prison on homicide related charges. So he, you know, he was at the, the arts festival, him and the whole bunch of people were outside, and the two gangs 
they couldn't get along. They were playing part cheesy. They were playing Scrabble, and somebody lost an eye. No, not an eye, an eye. <laughs> they couldn't spell it, Mr. Incredible. So Mr. Tajheej Wells didn't like that his word was not in mu as much money as somebody else's. So Mr. Tajheej, you know, he got his not licensed firearm and started to shoot a bunch of people. Now, if somebody else had a gun, you know, one of the good people had a gun, then it would have been a fair fight. But Mr. Tahij Wells, he shot the 22 people, 22 people, because nobody else had a gun because the police had to find the play. And it was in Trenton. Trenton is the capital of New Jersey, and you don't want to go there at night unless you are carrying a gun. And in New Jersey, it's very hard to carry a concealed weapon because we're such a fine state. Now, Mr. Martin, what do you think of Mr. Tahij Wells? This was happening at 3 o'clock in the morning. This is normally when you're getting up to go to work. <laughs> okay? So what do you think about Mr. Tahij Wells? Do you think he had a licensed firearm since he was in jail on homicide related? <laughs> he, he definitely didn't have a license. <laughs> He didn't have the license and the education that he needed to have a license. And we see once again the broken system in in in, in the families. You know, the lack of education, the lack of, uh, of discipline, and this is what we got. This is the this is the uh, the generation that we have today, and, and, and this is the people that goes to jail and come back. They they given a second chance, and they don't. They don't like to work. They don't like to, you know. Okay, I did a mistake. I'm gonna, I, I repent. I'm gonna, you know, raise up again, and I'm gonna do good. But they don't. So they go back to the criminal activity. Why? Because let, let, me, let me let me just add this part. I just want to cut you for a second. I'll bring you back for a second. The mainstream media buried this story. They buried this. This is the worst mass shooting in New Jersey history. They buried this story. Why? Because this is, look at Mr. Tahij Wells. He looked like a fine, outstanding young man of color. Go ahead, Mr. Martin. Yeah, that's, that's sad. That's sad because, you know, unfortunately, he goes back to, to, to this group. You know, I'm from Mexico, and I'm not saying that Mexicans are not, are, there's not bad Mexicans, but, I mean, out of 10, maybe one or two are bad. But in this group of people, I think eight, nine out of ten. So something's going on with this culture. Something's going on with this. It, it, it's a general problem right now that we have. And once again, we go back to the lack of of, uh, of God's laws, God, lack of uh, God's uh, fear in God. You know. I mean, we see the passage here in Romans 13. It says, let every person submit himself to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God. And those who, that exist are put in place by God. So whoever opposes the authority has resisted God's direction. And those who have resisted will bring, to, will bring judgments on themselves. So they're bringing judgment on themselves because they keep breaking the law. They keep breaking the law. They don't behave, and they don't. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a it's it's a it's, it's a chain reaction. It keeps going and going and going. And and uh, like you say, Rabbi, what if somebody had a gun? He'll be out of commission right now. He'll be out of business. So it's once again lack of God's commandments. Lack of God. Fear, fearing of God, that's, that's, I mean, it's, it's a big problem that we have in, in our society today. Ravel, you want to add your two shekels to this story before we go to commercial break? Sure. See, he had already been in prison on homicide-related charges. You know, back before the police state was instituted in the United States, down here in the South, we had something called lynching. And, you know, a lot of people up around you guys frowned on that. But 
how most of these lynchings took place is if somebody who was already in jail for murder got let out by a judge and the public didn't really agree with that, they would just take care of that person before they hurt anybody else. So I know a lot of people frown on that, but, you know, back during those times, this certainly was a crime-free place around here. So, you know, this guy probably should not have been out. Obviously, some judge let him out. So I know you can't lynch people in this day and time. They'll put you in prison. But, you know, you should call your congressman. You guys live up there. You should call your congressman and demand, find out what judge let this guy out, and demand that judge be held accountable. That judge should be made to repay for all those people that that guy shot. And that would be justice. That judge should be made to pay up for that, and he should be definitely be impeached. Amen to that. Amen to that. We need to deal with our judges, okay, um, in a more serious way. Well, you're listening to the Remnants Call the Sledgehammer Show. We're going to take a quirk. Quirk. Quick commercial message, and we'll be back right after this message. Shalom. My name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman, and I invite you to come to visit our congregation. If you are in the tri-state area, come out and visit with us on Shabbat. We are a congregation of Jews and Gentiles living as one in the Messiah Yeshua. BGMC is a place of true worship. The focus never wanders from the Hebraic roots of our faith. Beth Goyim is rooted in the Word of God from Bereshit through to the book of Revelation. Messiah's strong words against man-made tradition are carefully recorded in Matthew 7. That is the reason we only follow the straight-up instructions found in Scripture. Truly, the way, the truth, and the life. If you're looking for a deeper walk with Adonai, come out for our Tuesday evening Bible study called Messianic Torah Time. Come, spend the day with us on any Shabbat. We start at 11 a.m. with the sound of the ancient Hebrew shofar. Next, we offer our King praise and worship in English, Hebrew, and Spanish. After worship, we review the headlines in the previous week's news from around the globe, especially news from the Holy Land, Israel. We don't just list the news headlines as current events, but we comb through the scriptures searching for clues to understand what they mean and then to help pinpoint prophetically our current position on Adonai's clock. After digesting all that modern information, we leave the world behind as we journey with our Adonai deep into his eternal word, not with just one or two scriptures, but usually seven or more scriptures. The spiritual nourishment and the richness of his kingdom become accessible to the ones who share this special time and seek them out. The day does not end there. Because Shabbat is so special to him, there is always so much more that our king desires to share. So instead of separating and leaving, we stay together as a family for potluck lunch and an afternoon study of our king's word. We close the Shabbat together with the reading of the New Week's Parashah. That's the Torah portion. Even after those blessings, many of us just can't get enough. So the members bring prepared homemade foods to share while we all enjoy an uplifting movie together. If all that information is not quite enough, you can check out our website where you will find over 200 video teachings and Biblical Holy Day studies. Under Messianic Torah Time, the Hebrew Roots button, you'll discover free studies on many, many different topics, including PowerPoint slide presentations. If Beth Goyim sounds like a place you'd love to visit, but you live outside the tri-state area, there is still a way to connect with us. We stream live on the internet on Tuesday, Thursday, and Shabbat. The website is www.bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. Our phone number is 973-338-7800 or 978-2-YESHUA. That's 978, the number 2, 
Yeshua. Shalom. Welcome back to the Remnants Call, the Sledgehammer Show. You can listen to great messianic music uh, on La Casa de las Naciones.org or WTRCRadio.com. Listen to the Senderos Antiguos show. It's live Monday nights, 8 to 10 p.m., but it's recorded, so you can listen to it anytime you want. Great two-hour show. And going on to the next slide, um, you can go to a Messianic student or YeshuaTube.org. And uh, this past Shabbat, we talked about what happens if there's a famine of the Torah of life. And no dedication to those, his words. Learn about the dedication of our lives to God's word. Because we're do it now before society throws down and starts. God starts puking us out of where we're living. And then our application is now working. You go to your app store and type in Beth Gleam Live. Beth Gleam Live. All right. You're listening to the Sledgehammer Show. The remnant's called the Sledgehammer Show. It's about prophecy, politics, religion, the straight truth. And all we're backing everything up with scripture. This is show number 226. It's called the abyss. And by those stories, we're pretty much slid right into the abyss. Ah! Okay? But the Lord is going to keep those who follow Yeshua and keep the Torah. You can't say, I believe in Yeshua and don't follow the Torah. Because that would be Satan. Okay? Going on to the next news story. Esther! The book of Esther. We're going to be talking about guns. So if you're a gun enthusiast, listen to this story. And if you think you guns killing people, it's, no, the person who's pulling the trigger, our, our friend over there from the shot 22 people he in New Jersey, he wasn't a mobster. Mobsters do it quietly. They, they generally don't waste bullets too much. They're too expensive. Get good at shooting. But if you're not good at shooting, you just shoot all over the place. Esther 11 says, the letter said that the king had granted the Jews in every city the right to assemble and defend their life by destroying, killing, and exterminating any force and any people or providence that would attack them. So the Bible, this is just one scripture, but the Bible gives us a right to defend ourselves. Okay? Now, this is a twofold story. Okay? The New York governor, Mr. Idiot Andrew Cuomo, you are a moron, but you really stuck your foot in it this time, you donkey. Extraordinary because the Trump is suing the Trump administration over the constitutional right of family to separate it at the border. Okay, let's just get this straight, you clown. Okay, and you idiots over at CNN, you morons, do not equate this with the Holocaust, you pieces of crap. All right, now let's just get this straight. My family didn't want to go to the concentration camp, we didn't go, hey, let's go to Auschwitz. It sounds like a great place, a nice hot tub, showers that have gas, and you know, we get to die, and they get to sh we get a good haircut, and we get to work our lives to death, okay? You know, don't ever do that again, you pieces of garbage. These parents brought their children, okay? Maybe we need to look into their countries that they are sandwich holes, okay? Maybe we need to do something like that, or, you know, uh, what was um uh, Fonda. The old uh, guy Fonda, not Jane Fonda, her brother, Peter Fonda, says, you know, this is terrible. Okay, what? Well, we're going to bring 100 Mexican families to your house, all right? And you got to keep them there, and we're going to make sure you keep them there. We're going to take them from the border. We're going to bring them to your house and see what you like, you stupid piece of garbage. What? Let's see. Constitutional right. Hey, Andy. Hey, Andy Cuomo, Mr. Governor of New York. What's one of the hardest things to get in New York besides a gun? That's a constitutional right, too. Huh. Checkmate. You want to open your mouth about this, then every gun, proper gun owner is going to open up their mouth about their constitutional right to defend themselves from these pieces of garbage that don't follow God. What do you think there, Mr. Rabbit, Mr. Kosher Rabbit? When they don't follow God, is a uh, is when when we when we see the it's an anti constitutional basically when when we started from the you know we talking about with the and the governor we talking about also in the 
using Trump administration that they, they said is uh, the constitutional rights of families to separate the, uh, at the borders. We can see clear that it's not chosen in, in uh, the media is the one who is uh, taking false uh, evidence. The, I don't know if you have the chance to, to I'm sure you, you see this already. They, they, there is proof also that either in Clinton administration and Obama, they, they, they were separating and they say clearly we're going to build this, we're going to uh, move this more secure in the borders. It goes all the way back to Bush. Yes, yes, uh, uh, I believe it's all that, but uh, I, I, I think also his wife is talking against uh, Trump uh, about that. But we can they, they don't see the, 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 the big picture. You know, you come in here and you have to follow the the law of the land. You know, this country were founded uh, in basis the, the the constitution. We can clearly see that this that this country work basic in God's war. And the Torah says, you well, know we can hear that you're from Ireland, right? <laughs> But that is no. When they want to change something, that is, I call that that is uh, is anti-constitutional. When we when we coming in here and we try to put our cultures in here, I mean, they already have a little a little chance to to bring their own cultures in here. But what about to defend this country? What about to to support this country? Many people don't see it in, in, uh, in that way. Many people see that just just pointing fingers, oh, he's separating families. He's not separating families. He's, he's doing what, what, what he's supposed to do, you know, from there. If you don't cut the wheat from the, from the roots, it's going to grow, grow again. I mean, it sounds cold. It sounds really... Uh, sad for the people who who they are comfortable in this country already look, you know? look what he says look at look what andy says andy cuomo says a moral failing in human tra tragedy andy cuomo who's uh divorced um you know i think i don't even know if he's married i don't know about this clown but he said a moral failing what i'm what i'm pointing out here he's saying it's a constitutional right which is not you have to be, have a, be a citizen to have a constitutional right. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You know, uh, wait, let me, let me bring on another guy from Ireland, um, the Mexican himself, because we can hear that you're, you know, I'm, I mean, it's just amazing. I mean, but my constitutional right is to bear arms, okay? My constitutional right is to bear arms. What do you think there, Mr. Martin? Well, I think he uh, he checkmate himself. I mean, he he quote the constitution and and you know he's forgetting about the other things, Second Amendment, you idiot. <laughs> so uh, these these liberals, they 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 ask him for more. They they call him this a, a moral. He says what well, a moral failing in humanity and human tragedy. Who told these people to come here? They're coming in here. The parents are very responsible. They send the kids here. How, how me as a parent, and I'm from Mexico, how I'm going to send my kid, my, my little Benjamin or my Leah, I'm going to send them ahead of me. It, it, it's, it's, it's stupid. It's, it's, it doesn't make sense. Oh, but now but since they came illegally, they crossed the border illegally, now they ask you for rights? I mean, come on. These people, they're a bunch of idiots because everybody knows in the in the Obama administration, like Robert says, he said it, there's no other government, other president before Obama that deport and separate more families than any other president in history. He deported more people and separate and broke families in the years that he was in presidency. And nobody knew about it. CNN never, never, never say nothing about it in the news, but he did. He, 
He was the worst president for, for the immigrant peoples in, in the country. So now we have President Trump to try to establish the law, try to bring everything back in order. Oh, now he's he's a big guy. No, he's not. Now we have all these people. Remember, remember the homeschooling family that Obama wanted to, that they had to go to the Supreme Court, the homes, the German homeschooling family, because homeschooling is illegal in Germany. And I didn't hear Cuomo saying, no, we'll, we'll take them here because they were in New York, you piece of trash. All right. Um, I just want to get to one more story. We're hitting the hour mark here because this isn't. <laughs> Everybody's talking about this one. I'm just talking about the constitutional right. My constitutional right, the Second Amendment, is to have a well-armed militia and to be able to defend my home. Don't tread on me, Andy. Okay? Yeah. Okay? Okay, if you don't want guns, then make sure your, your security detail doesn't have a gun. Because, you know, that's right. And if they do have a gun, make sure it's only a four-round a four clip. All right, last one, last story. Yeshua said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. No one, okay? I don't care if you're a Jew or whatever. doesn't matter. You have to go through Yeshua to get to the Father. Messiah has come. We proclaim it. We believe it. And you got to keep the Torah, all right? Now, here's a story. It's a, it's a two-panel uh, two story, okay? American and the Christian Nation billboard pulled after mayor gets mad. By the way, more are going up. Okay, the Dallas billboard declaring that America is a Christian nation was just pulled after the mayor and the newspaper columnist took issue with it. The 20 more billboards are taken into place. A billboard along the hot tollway caught the eye of a Dallas Morning News columnist, Robert Wolonski, a Jew, earlier this month. The writer isn't happy about what he saw. The billboard read, American is a Christian nation. And he penned a column in which Walensky called Jeffress among the city's most divisive voices. The billboard, the billboard is telling me and everyone else who does not worship Yeshua HaMashiach that we do not belong here. No, you idiot Jew boy. He's not saying that. He's saying that we're a Christian nation. We follow the Bible. And if you're not wearing seats, you don't have a beard, you're not following the Torah. So shut the hell up, you moron. And then the Dallas mayor, Mike Rawlings, a Democrat, and then another loser, had a thing or two to say as well about the billboard. This is not the Christ I follow. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Yeshua said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets into heaven except through me. Which part of that, you dumb Christian, you goy? Which part of that don't you understand? Which part of the Gospel of John didn't you read? Oh, most Democrats don't know how to read. Most Gentile Christians don't know how to read their Bible. Not the Christ I, I follow. You're a moron. Nobody gets into heaven except through Yeshua. I don't care if they're God's people. You, you go into a prostitute, you go into a whore, you're not getting into heaven. You lie, you're not getting into heaven. You don't believe in Yeshua, you're not getting into heaven. You're going to be in court without a lawyer. Now. Let's see what Rap will thinks. All right, well, I think I think the answer lies in this. He says that's not that's not the Christ I follow. Okay, so he's following some dude named named Christ. Uh, that's the isn't that the Catholic dude you see dressed in women's clothes? So I think what he's following is is the is the is the greek transvestite that says hey it's okay for a queer homo to be a preacher i don't think this man's following yeshua because yeshua is the one that said i am the way this this christ i see all sorts of different ways in the name of christ all sorts of different denominations and all sorts of craziness and they all say it's in the name of Christ so this this Christ you know uh, that name was not assigned to the Son of God until the Catholics did it 
you know, many, many, many years before Yeshua came and lived among us as a man, you know, they called Apollo the Christ, and they called Tammuz the Christ, because that's just a simple word in Greek that just means anointed. So they called a lot of other people that. So I think that he's still following one of them, not the Son of God. Rev Ed, what do you say to the idiot Dallas mayor and, and, the, and the Jew boy who doesn't like what, what the billboard said? But basically, they, they need more, uh, you know, bottom line, they need more education, basically. Uh, because you, you have to see where, what is going to be uh, helpful for, for your life. Uh, Deuteronomy 31 says, Torres is life, and we, we need to bring back the truth to the, to the nations. We need to, to train the kids. We need to train leaders. We need to train our, our house to, to defend. And and the, and the, and and one and one portion to defend, talking about against the evil, because you know that. The, for uh, for the world, we uh, we we don't look good. We are the weird ones. We have to be able to confront them and to tell them not the truth. Is that normal to feel weird or will to feel normal? <laughs> you know, in one hand, yeah, you have everything, the power of the Lord because He give you the strength. In the other hand, you have the dumb people who are against what is good and what is good is the 613 commandments of God. The whole Bible is good. And they need more training and they, they need to study more. Mr. Martin, your last two shekels as we wrap up this puppy. Yes. Uh, well, to all those, to all the our audience, we, we tell them that to come back to the word, to the real word, to the real Yeshua, to the real Derek, come, the way, the truth, and the life. The, the, the real Yeshua that stands for his father's word. The one who shows us how to go into that door that's going to lead us to heaven, to eternal life. Not this Jesus that is showing to different things out of the out of, out of context of the Torah. Eat, eat pork eaters, Sunday worshipers, and bunch of other doctrines. Come back to the real word, the word of God that's going to lead you to eternal life. If you don't do that, keep following that Jesus Christ, the Greek, that is going to lead you to hell because no one comes to the Father but through Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. The road is broad, but the gate is narrow. And what's on that gate? What would be on a Jewish person's gate? That would be the mezuzah. That would be the word of God. You got to go in through the commandments. And if you're a Jew out there and you don't want to believe in Yeshua, well, let me ask you a simple question. Since on Yom Kippur we need blood, what are you going to do about it? Well, you might like a kanish. You might like a deli sandwich, you know. You're not getting in there, Jew boy. You need the Messiah. We're not going to play. We're not going to mince words. You're going to hell. But with Yeshua, the Messiah, you're on the right path. You got to know him and follow him. Yeshua said, follow me. And he is the word. Gentiles, there is only one way into heaven. And that's Yeshua. And you have to follow him. Satan knows Messiah. Knows him very intimately. He just doesn't want to follow him. So if you're worshiping on Sunday, you're not following the Messiah. If you're keeping Easter or Christmas, 
you're not following Messiah. You're keeping the commandments of God? That's a good start, but you know, need to know Messiah also. They go hand in hand. Without one, you can't clap. You need both hands. There is only one way, only one truth, and one way to live our lives. We are a nation that's sliding into the, the abyss. As we started off with the Matthew scripture, there's really no talking. This is why we proclaim the word of God very strong. We're different than any other show out there. You know, I was watching Shapiro this morning on his live you know, conversation. What I saw, he was afraid to quote the word of God. I'm not afraid. Ben, don't be afraid. Be who we are. We're meant to teach the world God's word. Yes, Yahoo, Isaiah 42 said we're to bring the word of God to the nations. We're not to be afraid to follow Torah. We're not to be afraid, Ben, to have a beard. And you know what? The yarmulke, the kippah, is not in the Bible. Even the Orthodox are saying that now. There is only one way and one truth and one way to, to get into heaven, and that's through the door. And the gatekeeper, his name is Yeshua. It's not Kepha, it's not Peter. Yeshua said, I'm the gate. You've been listening to the remnants call the sledgehammer show. I bid you an amen, an amen, an amen. amen. Shalom, this is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. I would personally like to thank you for tuning in to The Remnants Call each and every week. You can listen to the full message on our website, BethGoyim.org. If you have drawn closer to the King of Kings, learned more about Him today, we are blessed. If you are blessed by these messages, please consider a donation to our ministry. You can go to our website, BethGoyim.org. That's B E T H. G O Y I M dot org and click on the donate button. You do not have to have a PayPal account to donate. All you need is a debit card. Once again, thank you very much for listening to The Remnants Call. If you have not taken your first steps to be born again. Just ask God's help. Remember, it's His loving grace that has come to find you. No one is worthy or able to reach God, but God can reach us, and He's reaching out to you now. Just open your heart and let Him in. His arms are open, and the blessing of salvation and eternal life are waiting for you. Don't let it wait any longer. Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his shalom. Shalom. My name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman, and I invite you to come to visit our congregation. If you are in the tri-state area, come out and visit with us on Shabbat. We are a congregation of Jews and Gentiles, living as one in the Messiah Yeshua. BGMC is a place of true worship. The focus never wanders from the Hebraic roots of our faith. Beth Goyim is rooted in the Word of God from Bereshit through to the book of Revelation. Messiah's strong words against man-made tradition are carefully recorded in Matthew 7. That is the reason we only follow the straight-up instructions found in Scripture, truly the way, the truth, and the life. If you're looking for a deeper walk with Adonai, come out for our Tuesday evening Bible study called Messianic Torah Time. Come, spend the day with us on any Shabbat. We start at 11 a.m. with the sound of the ancient Hebrew shofar. Next, we offer our King praise and worship in English, Hebrew, and Spanish. After worship, we review the headlines 
in the previous week's news from around the globe, especially news from the Holy Land Israel. We don't just list the news headlines as current events, but we comb through the scriptures searching for clues to understand what they mean and then to help pinpoint prophetically our current position on Adonai's clock. After digesting all that modern information, we leave the world behind as we journey with our Adonai deep into his eternal word, not with just one or two scriptures, but usually seven or more scriptures. The spiritual nourishment and the richness of his kingdom become accessible to the ones who share this special time and seek them out. The day does not end there. Because Shabbat is so special to him, there is always so much more that our king desires to share. So instead of separating and leaving, we stay together as a family for potluck lunch and an afternoon study of our king's word. We close the Shabbat together with the reading of the new week's parasha. That's the Torah portion. Even after those blessings, many of us just can't get enough. So the members bring prepared homemade foods to share while we all enjoy an uplifting movie together. If all that information is not quite enough, you can check out our website where you will find over 200 video teachings and biblical holy day studies. Under Messianic Torah Time, the Hebrew Roots button, you'll discover free studies on many, many different topics, including PowerPoint slide presentations. If Beth Goyim sounds like a place you'd love to visit, but you live outside the tri-state area, there is still a way to connect with us. We stream live on the internet on Tuesday, Thursday, and Shabbat. The website is www.bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. Our phone number is 973-338-7800 or 978-2-YESHUA. That's 978, the number 2, Yeshua. Shalom.